perfection. Hello all you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you, the person who is so very tired across this last week, I've run a minimum of 5k every single day, my legs. They are jellified. And yes, I am also aware that I'm dressed as a sort of like very low-key Sunday league football captain thanks to this dad fleece that I've got on here. But it is so cold here in Wales. So very cold and wet. Yes, you get to decide what list I told out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than, I've genuinely lost my kazoo this time, one Mac Mittens for their suggestion of video game weapons that are, for all intents and purposes, really, really bad, yet for some reason we just can't stop using them. Now, picking the right weapon is so, so crucial in any video game because it can mean the difference between emerging victorious and having your candy ass stomped into a bloody paste. Now, logic dictates that it makes sense to pick up the most powerful or versatile weapon for any given encounter, whilst also factoring in the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent, of course. And here's the thing, you most definitely should never, ever, under any circumstances, pick up a weapon that just screams to everyone in the room, I am completely useless. And yet, it sure would be funny to kill somebody with this right <laughs> I know, it's, I, I, somebody stop me. But that's the point of this list today, so let's have a chat about it. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight useless video game weapons that we just can't help but use. And you know the draw by now, pop your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. But let's kick things off with number eight, the Impact Hammer from Unreal Tournament. Now, Unreal Tournament boasts one of the greatest arsenals in first-person shooter history, but in the event that your more exciting weapons run drive ammo, you'll be left with the game's default weapon, which is, well, the not-so-trusty Impact Hammer. Now, on paper, the Impact Hammer sounds pretty decent indeed, because once you get close to enemies, you just give them a little bonk and they explode into a shower of gore. Sounds pretty good, but the problem is, is that in order to do that, you need to be a uh, uh, mm, uh, uh, this close to your enemy to actually hit them with it. And when you are uh, 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 this close to your enemy in Unreal Tournament, you're already dead around here. Yeah, good luck trying to use that. And yet, successfully melting rivals is just so goddamn satisfying when it does happen that it quickly becomes something of an addiction. Seriously, you could be using one of the game's objectively better weapons, like the flat cannon or shock rifle, but the visceral thrill of sneaking up on an unsuspecting foe and immediately pulping them into meaty chunks, well, it is an intoxicating high. So yes, while its thoroughly pants range will leave you wide open in battle, the fact that you could kill somebody with it well, it's going to be enough to tempt you to try again, and again, and again. Number 7. The Nail Bat. Final Fantasy 7. In the original version of Final Fantasy VII, the Nail Bat was an unapologetic joke weapon that players could find in the Temple of the Ancients. Now, to be fair, the bat does have some impressively high attack stats, and so would put a pretty decent dent in many enemies, as a bat adorned with nails typically should. But there is one problem with this bat, and that is that when you look at it, you'll realise that it has no materia slots on it whatsoever, meaning that all it will do is physical damage, high physical damage, but nothing else. And in this game, not having Materia? Ugh. Ugh. Ooh. Gross. Brian. And yet, as much as a brutal off-putting drawback as that might seem, wailing away on enemies like your Negan from The Walking Dead, it's just too damn badass not to try. However, I'm just going to tell you this. This is what's going to happen when you use it against, I don't know, like a boss or a seriously tough enemy. You'll go in there, just striding in, whack, and it will look at you and be like, did you just lodge your toothpick in me, mate? Here, have it back as I ram it down your throat. Though Final Fantasy VII Remake made many welcome improvements upon the original, the Nail Bat was controversially altered to actually let players upgrade it with materia slots, so you know what? It's just not the same as it was in the original. Number six, the Air Taser, Siphon Filter. Okay, right, let's just be honest here. I'm pretty sure that anyone who picked up a copy of Siphon Filter probably spent more than a fair few hours just pissing around with the Air Taser. This weapon, fundamentally as useless as it is, is hilarious to use. Also horrifying. I'm just putting that out there as a disclaimer. It is very horrifying. And why is that? Well, because once you taser somebody for long enough, it sets them on fire, gives them um, a slow, agonizing, brutal death. So yeah, I spent a lot of time doing this as a kid. 
But the thing is, is that it's a very impractical weapon, given that you're forced to stand still whilst firing the taser, leaving you completely vulnerable to detection and attacks from any other enemy in the vicinity. But here's the thing, like I said, the trade-off is if you keep electrifying them for five seconds or so, they burst into flame, so... Oh, could get shot, could be seen, but still... Bzzz, <laughs> I've got problems! <laughs> Even accepting its limited range and how effectively it paralyzes you in place, the air taser emboldens the player to embrace their inner pyromaniac, cackling with maniacal glee and whispering not so quietly to themselves, burn baby burn. Number 5. The M260B Flamethrower – Aliens vs Predator Okay, so now we move from one weapon that inadvertently let you set people on fire, to a weapon that should let you set people on fire, but completely bungles it. Welcome to Aliens vs Predator the game. Now in theory, a big flamethrower might seem like a great weapon to keep aliens and or predators alike at bay, but in the case of the former, there is one major snag. For you see, if you douse a xenomorph in a wall of flames, it for some reason decides that, um, you appear to be a bucket of water and it wants to put itself out by rubbing all over you and will charge directly towards you, which, let me just tell you, when you've got a, like, 30-foot, giant, acidic, blooded monster rampaging towards you on fire, that's just not what I want. That's not what I wanted at all. Oh, and also, they'll explode, which will cover you in that acidic blood. So, upon exploding, they'll paint you with that white hot acid if they're close enough, and it will kill you instantly. Now, I'm no big, intelligent, <coughs> smart guy, but that seems like something that we don't want to happen, right? Right? And yet, I'm gonna do it because obviously it's a flamethrower. It looks cool. Yeah, I wouldn't have lasted long in the Marine Corps. Number 4. Trank Gun Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty So, Metal Gear Solid 2 is a brilliant game, and one of the reasons why is because it introduces players to the Trank Gun, a gun that fires darts that will put all of their enemies into sleepy bye-bye states. And while options for players are certainly a good thing, especially in a series centred around stealthy infiltration, the Trank Gun definitely lacks the visceral thrill of wrapping your arms around a genome soldier's windpipe and tightening your grip until their neck satisfyingly cracks. Sorry, a, a, bit, a bit too much? Yeah, okay, I'll book some counselling. But the Trank Gun certainly serves a function in allowing you to navigate areas without leaving a messy bloodbath in your wake. However, there's an argument to be made that it's ultimately a bit too effective for its own good. Because what it does is it allows you to just wander around the room. If an enemy spots you, just shoot them a few times with the Trank Gun, they're down, and then you just carry on in the merry way. I mean, with every other conventional firearm, you have to actually, like, evaluate whether or not it's worth pulling the trigger, because you will sound an alarm and tons of other people will be here. Whereas this is just like, doobity ba, pew pew pew, doobity Ba, pew, 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 doo -ba -dee -ba, pew, pew, pew. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, I accidentally hit. Oh, ooh. wake up, wake up. <laughs> but let's be honest, even if the Trank Gun deprives the game of much of its gut wrenching suspense, it is just absurdly fun to use. Holding up guards and then sending them to the land of Nod with a single Trank round is compulsively addictive. And for the sickos amongst us, you might even hang around for them to wake up, only to immediately Trank them again. Number 3. The Blunderbuss – Red Dead Redemption – Undead Nightmare Okay, so the Blunderbuss as a weapon, which is basically just like a trumpet that fires shrapnel, is not a gun that you would actually want to use in real life, let alone a video game, seeing as if you did want to hit the broadside of a barn, well, you are not going to. This gun is just like, <laughs> everywhere except where you want it to be. And in Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare, the amazing expansion for the original game, John Marston even makes fun of the vendor trying to sell him a blunderbuss, noting, well, I do actually want to hit my enemies. And he certainly can't blame Marston for dismissing it because it's a dusty relic from the previous century. But the blunderbuss does offer some serious stopping power, enough so that if you do fire it at a zombie at close range, it will immediately explode them into a crimson fountain. And that's exactly why players wanted to use this gun. I mean, yes, the reload times are obnoxiously long, the range is pitiful, the damage that it does if you don't get them in that sweet spot is, well, like trying to flick a zombie in its ear. Yeah, not going to be that effective, but still, when they are up close in the splash zone, oh, it's very satisfying. Sadly, the blunderbuss can't be used in the main Sons zombie game, because apparently that would just be a bit too much fun, so it's relegated to this glorious expansion. Number 2. The Clob GoldenEye 007 Okay, let's just face facts here. By any sensible metric, the Clob from the outstanding 
GoldenEye 007 is one of the worst guns in first-person shooter history. This submachine gun has a low rate of fire and shambolic accuracy, making it pretty much the worst weapon for most engagements with CPU and flesh and blood players alike. It actually had an infamous enough rep amongst even the game's own development that GoldenEye director Martin Hollis actually called it a noisy water pistol. But here's the thing, what makes this such an impossible to resist gun is that in the main campaign, you can dual wield the suckers. I mean, yeah, the accuracy is going to be bad, but who doesn't want to just be storming down a corridor going, ah, take that nameless goons. That's satisfying. Admittedly, the moment that you finish shooting your last bullet and all of the nameless goons are still alive looking at you going, oh, now we're going to kill you. Yeah, fair cop. Between this, the weapon's distinct look, unique sound, and sheer clunkiness, it has a lot of charm going for it that even some of the game's better guns don't. You'd never want to use this in a desperation scenario, but in this case, personality does actually go a long way. Plus, let's face facts here. If you've got two of these, all right, and you're feeling a bit juicy, you can always scream at the top of your voice, it's clobberin' time. And that alone is worth trying, at least. I don't know, 20 times? Yeah, give or take. And number one, Gone with the Wind, Tekken 3. And finally, we close on something that technically isn't a weapon, but is such an amazing ability that it kind of needs to have a place on this list. Tekken 3's unlockable fighter, Gone, is an adorable dinosaur with a rather not so adorable special attack called Gone with the Wind. It involves Gone simply turning around, pointing his posterior at his opponent's face, and letting rip with a fart so noxious that it surely be classed as a chemical weapon by most governments. Gone's crop dusting attack Attack, unfortunately only does meager damage and it's a bit of a pain in the ass as it were to pull off in the first place and actually have it connect with your opponent but here's the thing it's a fart in a video game and you're a tiny dinosaur of course I'm gonna use this ad nauseum. I'm sorry, I just will. It is pathologically impossible to resist the allure of Gon's windy assault and why deny yourself? Just do it, do it. You will lose every single match that you have with your friends on Tekken 3, but who cares? You're having fun and that's all that matters. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight utterly pathetic video game weapons that we can't stop using. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. And if you want to follow me on the social medias, you can do so over here, and you can follow my lovely editor, Sai, over here on her socials as well. Big love to you all. Hope that you enjoyed that. And remember, above all else, be kind to yourself, all right? We do have one weapon that we can all have access to, but sometimes it needs a bit of dusting off and sh sharpening from time to time. Apologies, i got a frog stuck deep within my throat there and that is our brains you just gotta be kind to yourself learn to accept your flaws learn to accept your benefits keep working on both of them to become a better you because you deserve the best things in life like love happiness and success all right big love to you my friend hope you're smashing your life goals today and remember above all else even though i've been jules you've been awesome and i'll speak to you next time bye